uh, come be a part of that. Um, we've been talking about going deep and wide with the Lord. Going deep in the sense that we're building our relationship deeper so that we can be far-reaching, that we can go wider with what God has called us to do. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the plan that God has for us. So um, in that, today, I was going to talk about um, loving our children. How many of you know you should love your children? All right, you got it down. We're going to move on then. <laughs> We're going to talk about commitment today. It. You know, um, yesterday we, Delonde and I and my mom and Jeanette, we, we, we had a service here for my uncle, my, my last uncle that went to be with the Lord a, a few weeks ago. And we had a, um, just a, a really, really awesome service just honoring him and honoring his life. And many, many people yesterday gave their life to Jesus. Many people. I, I, would say, I would say 40 to 50 people responded to give their life to Jesus yesterday. Yeah, it was great. But you know, in that, I don't think they all know what they're getting into. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they make the commitment you know, and I tell them, you know, get a church, get a Bible, you know, get in, plugged into a, a body somewhere and, and, and get to know God, build a relationship with them. I do all that, but most of them I probably will never, ever see again because my uncle lived out in the Hemet Valley and, and uh, they weren't going to do a service. I said, well, I'll do a service, Just, we'll do it at my church. And so, the, you know, they invited friends from all over and they came and we did it and most of the people I didn't know, and, but many responded to give their life to Jesus. How many of you are married? Remember the commitment you made when you got married? You know, they tell you what you're getting into, kind of. You remember, Delanda? In, in two weeks, it'll be 33 years that we walk down this aisle right here in this church. Yeah, amen. And, and, and the first thing, because, because Delanda's dad was one of the pastors here, and, but he wasn't licensed yet as a minister. Um, he wanted to be a part of the service, but he wanted to walk, walk his daughter down the aisle. And I, I remember I'm standing, you know, right here, waiting, you know. And, you know, flower girls and maids and, you know, the groomsmen are coming around and, and my knees were shaking. I was so... <laughs> I was so nervous. I mean, here I am, I'm 19 years old, and I'm shaking, and I could feel tears just welling up inside of me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry? You know, I, I'm, it's, it's kind of a, you know, I, the heart's boom, 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 boom. You know, and then the door opened, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, I, I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm going down, you know. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just crazy. And then she comes with her dad, and, and she's so beautiful. And, and, and her dad just comes there, and, and Pastor Dave was here. And, and then they ask you this question. It's called a declaration of intent. And he said, Ron, do you now leave your father and mother to establish your home with Delanda as her husband, to receive her as your wife, to make a home where she be loved and cared for as long as God grants her life. If so, say, I do. And I said, I do. And that was 33 years ago. That's just the declaration intent. And you know, the word of God in Genesis chapter Chapter 2, it tells us, the last verse, in that, he says, A man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Amen? Amen. That all you mama's boys out there, you got to leave your mama and cling to your wife. Your wife now takes priority in your life. So all you mamas got to let go. 
<laughs> your mama's got to let go, and you say, you're on your own, boy. Get out there and do it. And uh, so Delon and I have been clinging. But, you know, when you come to Jesus, Marianne, my notes are jacked up. Just telling you right now. When you come to Jesus, he says, Behold, old things are passed away, and all things become new. So when I, when I look at that as, as getting married to my wife, I have to leave my mama and cling to my wife. When I came into the kingdom of God, now I need to leave my past behind me, and I need to cling to Jesus. I need to let go of the, the way that I used to think. I need to let go of the way I used to live. I need to let go of the things I used to do. And I need to cling to Jesus and start doing things His way instead of my own way. In Matthew 6, it says, Seek first God's way of doing things, His way of being right, and all these things will be added unto you. When He says all, He means everything that you have need of will be taken care of as long as you make God first in your life. And so when, when I got married and I clung to my wife in the same way that when I got born again, when I gave my life to Jesus, and, and nobody was, you know, when you do it in the moment, your, your emotions are all involved. You know, I was crying right here at this altar, but it was, I clung to Christ. But nobody was there telling me, you got to stop doing this, 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 and this. They didn't me a, a list of do's and don'ts and I don't think God needs to give me a list of do's or don'ts because as I started getting close to him Jesse hey listen when I clung to my wife I know what to do and what not to do okay I know what to say and what not to say it's the same thing you know in the natural what what's going to bless and what's going to curse and what's going to help and what's going to heal and what's going to make angry. you know Kenny how long you been married how many? 20. You know what it takes, right? <laughs> Matthew, how long have you been married? You're learning what it takes, huh? <laughs> Mr. RL, how long have you been married? 55. Woo. Marlene, has he done a good job of learning what to do? Pretty much. <laughs> See, if you want to know the truth, you just ask the mate. You know, they'll tell you the truth. But when you, when you come to the kingdom, you have to leave your past behind. So I know that God made me a certain way. I've always been loud. Always. Since I was a little kid, my brother used to say, we're, we're right here. Because <laughs> I've always had a loud voice, and I always laughed loud. You pick me out, you can pick me out in a room real easy. You know, my mom says, oh, there's Ron, he's laughing, because it's loud. I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm really loud. And so there's just characteristics about me that the way God created me, okay, he created my personality. He created who I am. When I came into the kingdom, Pastor Jesse, he didn't say, hey, let's change on King's personality. He didn't do that. What he did do, Pastor, is he said, there's some characteristics about you that you need to work on. There's some character flaws in your life that don't line up with this. But he didn't beat me over the head. He just constantly revealed to me, and he still reveals to me the character flaws of my life that I need to to." to as my brother Juwan was, I need molded in, out, molded out, and I need more of him molded in. So when, when I come into the body of Christ, let him go of those things which are behind. And, and being married to Delonda, there was about well, seven years that we really didn't do it right. Then we spent probably the next seven years learning to do it right. And so for about 
19 years we've been celebrating. <laughs> you say, and you're our pastor, you bet. <laughs> you know, because if you think you got it all together, well, you'd probably be in heaven right now, huh? But being, being married has, has caused me to grow. But there's a step further that we took it. You know, they, they said, say I do. And then they, bring you, they brought me up here on the stage. We're probably about right here. Pastor Dave was right there, and her dad was right there. Her dad was a big man. I remember when he, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, he just kind of looked down on me. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? No, sir. No. He laid his hands on my head, and bam, I was filled. But they said to me, they said, uh, pa Pastor Dave said, Ron, will you repeat this vow to Delonda saying after me? And much in the same way, when, when people come to the altar to accept the Lord, we, we say, let's repeat this prayer after me. And, you know, and a lot of times we say things that we have really no clue about what we're really saying. We were talking to a bear the other night. You're saved, amen? Bear saved. I said, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, yes. I said, you believe he died for you? He said, yes. I said, you believe he's raised from the dead? He said, yes. And he, I said, you believe he's up in heaven at the right hand of the Father? He said, yes. I said, be forgiven of all your sins. He said, yes. So when we, when we come to the kingdom, but I, I make this vow to Delanda. I, Ron, take you, Delanda, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish all, everybody say all, all, all the days of my life. As God is my witness, I give you my promise. Those are, that is a strong vow. Man, that is, you know, it's something that's not taken real serious today. But I really took it to heart when I'm saying these things. And when I'm doing premarital counseling, one of the last sessions we have is we go over this. Because it's a vow that you're making. I made this vow to Delanda. Now, as God is my witness, the king of the universe, the creator of all things, is the witness of what I've said to her. That's pretty strong. I give you my promise. We, a lot of times, we bring people up. We have them repeat a prayer after us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. I thank you that he died for me and that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. I give you my life today. I surrender to you. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all the junk in this world. Fill me with your spirit that I may know you and walk with you and talk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. People come and we have them make that prayer. And a lot of times they don't know what it means, Joe. What does it mean to make that kind of a commitment that I'm going to have a relationship with somebody that I can't see? I believe that he is. I believe in what he's done. But I can't see him today. But we make that commitment. I'm going to do this. I'm going to build a relationship, Pastor Jesse, with the unseen God. And a lot of people struggle with that. How do I do that? What do I do? But when I look at this vow that I made from, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish all the days of my life, why can't we just say that to God? God, that's what's going to happen. You know, because a lot of times we give up on what God has for us because bad things happen. How many of you ever had something bad happen to you? After you were born again. 
How many of you have ever been let down after you were born again? But yet you're still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, because when we say for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, a, a lot of people get distracted, Pastor Jesse, because the Word declares that Jesus is my provider. So I, I, I quit my job once without having a job to go to. I'd never done that. My dad taught me, you don't quit your job unless you have a job. But the Lord told me, quit your job. So when I quit my job, and I, I didn't even want to tell my wife. Because I kind of had this thing. If you, if you leave a job, you don't go home until you have a job. I didn't know how long that was going to be. <laughs> so I caught, we used to have a pay phone out in the hallway. You know, I figured I was safe coming here, you know. Because I, I thought she'd meet me here, you know. And she didn't come that night. And I'm like, oh, man. So I, I got on the pay phone. That was before cell phones. And I called her and I said, hey, quit my job. And she said, oh, it's about time. I'm like, oh, Hallelujah. All right, I'll be home after church. <laughs> but it's amazing how God, because I've made a commitment to her. I've made a vow. For better, for worse, rich or poor, in sickness and in health, is God is my witness, I give you my promise. I've made a commitment to her. In that th same arena, I've made a commitment to the Lord. For better, for worse. In sickness and in health, rich or for poor. Because the Lord word declares that the Lord God is my provider, Bear. So if he is my provider, he knows what I have need of. Amen? He knows if I need a job. He knows if I need more money. He knows everything I have need of. So I can go to him, Rick, and say, hey, you're Jehovah Jireh. I was in China one day, and this guy wanted me to go to the other side of China. I lived in Beijing. He wanted me to go to a city called Arumachi. It's going to cost me about 5,000 Chinese dollars. And Saturday I'm laying in bed because on Sunday I had to give him the money. And I laid in bed and I said, Lord, I need 5,000 Chinese dollars today. Called, they're called renminbi. I told him I need 5,000 of them. And so he, uh, I, I, I asked him, you bring me water? I, I got one, but good, thanks. I'll take another one. So I have 5,000, I need 5,000 Chinese dollars, and I'm laying in bed, and I'm asking him, I'm talking to him, I said, Lord, I have need of this, because if you want me to do what you've called me to do, you've got to supply the need. So I get up, and that's what I would do, I'd lay in bed when I, when I needed money, when I, there was a, a need that arose, and I would just ask the Lord, it's really cool, i just ask him, hey, I need this amount. And Delanda, she would ask the Lord too. It's just beautiful the way it works. We just tug on him because he's who? He's our provider. You know, when the people of, left Egypt, when the Israelites left Egypt, they took all the gold and all the silver. They were not in lack at all. They had all the money. They left with everything. They were, they were blessed. I mean, it's like they got back pay for that 400 years of... Uh, of work that they did, that being in that labor camp, God back paid them 400 years and they took all the gold and silver out of there. They were blessed. The word tells us in Psalms, we took the gold, we took the silver. So if God has all that, I go to him. I don't call people and say, hey, I need some money. I go to him. Hey, you know what I have need of. You know I need this. So you're my God, you're the Lord, my shepherd, who I shall not want, and I call on him. And he opens the doors. And that day when I needed 5,000 Chinese dollars, a little 23-year-old Chinese girl called me and said, can I meet with you tonight? So I was uh, teaching, and um, I told her I'd go to dinner, and she came up to me at dinner time, and, and she handed me an envelope with 5,000 Chinese dollars in it. I said, why are you giving me this money? I mean, I know I needed it. But for a 23-year-old girl to give me a half a year's wages, I want to know what's up. She said, you came 
And you blessed my business the day we opened. Delonda was her first customer. She had this fit, nail salon, facial, massage, you know, really nice place. We, we went there. Delonda and I were just visiting China that time. And, and we were going to the zoo. They said, hey, you know, this lady lives by there. Could you go by and bless her business? We blessed it. And a year later, she's handed me $5,000. You blessed my business. I just sold it made double the money, and the Lord's told me to give away that 50% increase, so you're one of the people he's told us to give to, so I'm giving you 5,000 renminbi today. Everything I need. Jehovah Jireh. It's in my notes here somewhere. Da -da -da. Psalms 105, verse 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold. And then the next thing it says, there was none feeble among these tribes. So when he brought them out with all the silver and the gold, he brought them out as Jehovah Jireh. He brought them out totally whole. So when I come into the kingdom of God, I believe that he heals us. Amen? He brought them Israelites out and they didn't have there was no feeble among them young and old they did not have anything wrong with them they all had strength none was sick there was no one feeble come into the kingdom I, I believe that we could ask but hey it's sickness and health amen richer for poor it's sickness and in health no matter how I feel I declared I'm healed well, that's pretty dumb. <laughs> Listen. Psalms 107. Oh, there it is. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He cried, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Everybody say cried out. See, when, when you're not, your body is out of alignment with what the Word of God declares, you, you don't declare what you have. You cry out to the Lord. Okay, but a lot of times I get around people still to this day. You all know me, and you'll still say, well, I, my, my, uh, here's a good one. Well, my allergies are acting up. Oh, my gosh. How's, that can't be. That's what I say to people, and they're like, well, why can't it be? Because the word declares you don't have allergies. See, because what we do is we take ownership of the allergies and, and we, we put it on us and we say, okay, I've got allergies. I own this. It's mine now. When he declared that by his stripes you are healed. Okay? So you, we need a mindset change in this because he says, oh, verse 21, oh, everybody say, oh. Oh, come on now. Oh! That men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. See, let them offer sacrifice of sac let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So, translation. Your body is out of alignment. You might be here today, and you might be battling something. You know, I, I know, you know, that people battling all kinds of things, fibromyalgia, diabetes, you know, tumors, all this stuff. But what this scripture is saying, we cry out to the Lord, and, and instead of declaring what we have, we begin to rejoice in the Lord for what he's done. See, I, Jesse, I, I declare, I pr start praising the Lord that he's my healer. I start praising God that he's my deliverer. I start praising God that he's my strength. I start praising God that no weapon formed against me would prosper. I start praising God that he has delivered me, that he's by his stripes I'm healed. I start praising God in all those things. And no matter how I feel at that moment, it always leaves me. Now there, I ain't going to lie, there are times when I say, 
Oh, honey, I just don't feel good. I'm just going to take some medicine and go to bed. How many of you ever do that? But I have found when I put on a garment of praise, that that stuff just goes from me. When I start rejoicing in the Lord, when I start declaring His wonderful works, when I start making a sacrifice of, of thanksgiving, because, you know, Pastor Jesse, man, when, when you're, you know, you're feeling sick, you've got a sore throat, your head's congested, you know, and, and people, they have these, they call them allergies, and they're all congested, and they just want to take a pill and, you know, and drink some hot tea and stuff. I'm not against the pill, and I'm not against the hot tea and all that. But I am more for rejoicing. Amen. Don't rejoice because you got allergies, right, Mary? You don't rejoice. How many of you rejoice because you feel bad? <laughs> no, but I rejoice that he's my healer. I rejoice that he is the Lord God. And so he's my, the Lord God, my healer. And, and so take it a step further. He said, I will put a cloud over you by day and a fire by night because he is also the Lord God, our protector. Amen? Amen. Remember when you had your car accident? Your car was totaled. What happened to you? Nothing. Why? It's the Lord God, our protector. He's the Lord God, our protector. Amen? And so when we start, start receiving... What he's done, it makes all the difference in our lives, in the way that we live our life. It makes it easier to keep the commitment. Because I, I'm committed to Delanda. I am wholeheartedly, 100%, I can't say 110% because I don't have 100 I got 100%, that's it. But I'm 100% committed to for better, for worse, richer and poor, no matter how mad she gets at me, whatever, you'll take it. I'm committed. It's the same thing with Jesus. No matter what happens, I'm committed. It just doesn't matter. I'm committed to the cause of Christ. But when we get again, we don't tell people what you're committing to. You know what you, you commit to? You commit to love God and love people. What you're not committed to is to choose who you love. You're committed to unity in the body of Christ. You're committed to love your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And you might say, well, they don't act very brotherly or sisterly or, or very godly. It doesn't matter. We're still committed to love. Amen? It doesn't matter whether I like you or not. I'm committed to love you. She said, oh, you don't like me? <laughs> Do you like everybody, Al? Yeah, all right. How about you, Mike? You like everybody? Do you love everybody? You show them. Okay. Lillian, you're all big-eyed looking at me like, he's not going to talk to me, is he? <laughs> Do you love everybody, Lillian? I'm talking to the right crowd, I'll tell you. How many of you know that takes work? I have to remember, richer for poor, in sickness and health, for better for worse, that I'm going to love people. But when I'm committed to Christ, I can love Pastor Jesse. I can love through him. I can, I can take what they say about me. I can love them. It doesn't matter. It, when, you know what I found out? If people don't like me, they end up leaving. I don't ask for that, but if they don't like me, they'll, they'll leave me alone. Because I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to fight with people. Leave me alone. Because the Lord God is my protector. He protects me. He loves me. He loves me so much. He loves you so much. And in your commitment to Christ, you're committing, you're committing to the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Everybody look at your neighbor. 
You're committing to your neighbor too. You're committing to your neighbor. We don't always enjoy that one though. But we're making a, when you commit to the Lord, I'm committed to loving him and I'm committing to loving you. And, and it's just like being committed to, to the lawn done makes it easy to just love her. No matter what, what's going on, I still love her. No matter if we're mad at each other, if we have an argument, I still love her. It, I'm committed. I'm committed this way, and I'm committed this way. Because for better, for worse, richer, for poor, I'm committed to the cause of Christ. I'm going to... I leave my father and mother and I cling to my wife. And when we did that, we became one. And Jesus said this. He said, Father, in John 17, 21, he said, I pray that they would be one the way that you and me are one. That was Jesus' prayer for us, that we could be united just in the same way that he was united to the Father. So he wants us to be one in the Spirit in the church. Amen? That we, we be there for each other. We love on each other. We encourage each other. We build each other up. Amen? And then he, he wants us to be in unity. He says in Philippians 4 too, I implore you, Euodia and Syntyche, get along! Be in unity, amen? In Psalms 133, he says how good and pleasant it is when my brothers dwell together in unity, amen? It's ple he says, because there the commanded blessing flows, life evermore, and the anointing moves. The power of God shows up. When we're in unity, when we come believing that God is going to do something, he does something, amen? If you today and you say, hey, my body's out of alignment. I need the, the healer to come. Hey, reach out and grab hold of that healer. Believe he's coming to you right now. And you say, oh, I don't feel it. I remember one time I was, I was right here and I'm worshiping the Lord. And man, this joy just overtook me. And I'm standing here and I'm laughing and I'm just loving on God. And I mean, I felt like I was going right into the throne room of God. Pastor Dave walked up to me because I was the associate pastor. He said, I need you to go do something. Go do this, this, this. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, <laughs> so I went out. I took care of what he told me to do. And I came back and I come back and I stood right here and I raised my hands and, and the feeling was gone. I said, Lord, I don't feel it. And he said, since when is our relationship based on feeling? Amen. Since when is it based on how great you feel or that you're feeling goosebumps? It's not feeling, it's fact. I know that because the Spirit of God resides in me, that he goes with me where I go. Yeah. I could be in the darkest of dark places, Jesse, but hey, I'm the light. I'm, I'm the one, it's like I could go into to the, slum, the, the bar, the, it's just ugly. But God's still there. God's still there because I'm there. You know, if you ever want, afraid to fly, you really want to fly with me. Because I, I, the plane won't crash. Amen. It won't. God's got a plan for me, and it's not to die in a plane crash. Amen. So when I get on a plane, I don't even worry. I mean, when I first started to fly, Bear, I wasn't saved. I had to self medicate to get on the plane. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But I. When I got born again and committed to Christ, I walked into this protection thing, Jesse, and I'm like, it's all good. 
a little turbulence. People are starting to get a little freaked out. Don't worry, I'm here. <laughs> now, who am I? It's not just that not I'm a pastor or whatever, or that I'm all high and mighty on myself. I know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords resides in me, and I've committed to Him, and I've committed to Him after He committed to me. He committed to me a long time ago. When he started writing this book, when he took them children of Israel out of Egypt and they took all the gold and the silver and they took the, the healing with them and they went under a covering. 